page 104, parallel moves. On pages 102 and 103, they're talking about some stuff. 102 covers five finger, five C's. I'll you look at the at the top of the page. They're telling you where these C's are in the music, and you need to memorize these. In the bass clef, two ledger lines below the staff is a C. Just memorize it. Because if you look at the last one, two ledger lines above the treble clef is a C. See there, there they match. Because in the in the middle, one ledger line between each is middle C. And then the other C's are the other ones. That's, that's the C's. Okay, A18. It just helps to know what they are in the music because you glance at it and you know what it is and that life goes on. And they're telling you there to, to play these. So you start down here in a five finger position and move the left hand up. Then do the right hand and then move the right hand go up here and then move the right hand again and have fun with that. But do it in rhythm and correctly. I'm just fooling around here. I do that sometimes. On page 103 they're talking about the different triads. You see like in a C major scale they use only the white keys. I can have a triad starting on each note of the scale. Well, any scale can do that. Just so you know. Now I'm sticking with the notes within the scale. Only the white keys then. There's some major triads and there's some minor triads and there's a diminished triad you don't know about yet but there is. Uh -huh. so, that's what it is. So at the bottom of page 103 they give you a chance to play some of these triads. You have down here, well that's the one bell on the fourth step of the scale. That's an F. And then the next one is a C. And then a G. And then there's a D. This is not in the C major scale. They're using a D, but you don't know what a D's key signature is, so you're lost already. Now an A is here. Again, you don't know what an A key signature is, but it has a middle. And then an E, again, you got an E. And then the B, now you got two, two of them, but you don't know what a B key signature is, and I doubt you really want to have to deal with five sharps right now. But that's, for whatever reason, they're doing that, and they're saying hand over hand, so it's like, you see the LHRH? So you're starting out here, and then the right hand's going to do here, and then the left hand's here. See this? You're building on the here, the top note of each one, and you go here, 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 and then here, and then here. And that's what they're doing. They're building on the, on the, it's an interval of a five from here to here. One, two, three, four, five. It's an interval of a fifth. There's a reason for that, and we'll go back to it later. Just, there's a reason to go up in fifths. And, all right, fine, you ask me, I'll tell you. F major has no, has one flat. C major has no sharps or flats, so we, in effect, subtracted a flat. Because this has one flat, this has none. We took a flat away. Well, in G, we added a sharp, because G major has one sharp. You don't know this yet, just follow along. D major has two sharps, we added another sharp. A major has three sharps. E major has four sharps. F major, ha uh, B major, excuse me, has five sharps. We're just adding a sharp. You subtract a flat or add a sharp. It is what we call the circle of fifths. Because you're going up in fifths. You're starting here, that's a fifth. And that's a fifth above that. And then go up a fifth, you're here, and then another fifth, and then another fifth, and another fifth. We're going up in intervals of a fifth. And if we keep doing this, we'll go around all the key signatures, all seven sharps and flats, by subtracting flats or adding sharps, and that's the order. It's called the circle of fifths. This is the order that I do the scales. In my scale videos, I do it by circle of fifths, and that's what I encourage you to do. And you do it by key signature. Right now, you're just doing the major scales, but you want to do the minor scale, you do the minor scale with the same key signature. So if you want to do a C major scale, 
practice that, that's fine, but I'll do the A minor scale too. And I do the harmonic minors. Still a minor scale, A minor. No sharps or flats in it. And then the next one would be G major, one sharp. So we're adding a sharp each time. I don't want to get into it too deeply because we're going to get into it more as time goes on. Just for now, make sure you can do the C major scale as I do it in the video, one octave up and down. And I recommend you go ahead and do the A minor scale also. So when you first start to practice, you sit down and practice, do that C major scale, then do the A minor scale, and then you can start working on the pieces. So let's talk about this parallel moves. You see the right hand has got triads. You're going to use one, three, and five on these. You're starting out with the C. You're just going up the C scale. And then the last measure of the first line, you go back down. That's really all we're doing here. The left hand is just kind of following along with the bottom note. So a little technique here. We're going to use the same fingering for each of these. And the way I approach this, because we're doing three notes at a time, is I only think about one finger. And it doesn't matter which finger it is. Usually it's the melody, but this doesn't really have a melody to it. So let's say that's the thumb. And I just focus on the thumb. I just want to place the thumb where I, it goes, so don't worry about the other fingers. I'm collapsing the wrist a little bit on each of these. Don't play with a stiff wrist. Now, if I do that, I keep my hand in that position, the other finger should go along for the ride. All I have to do is focus on one finger. As long as I keep collapsing the wrist, I won't get stiff. See, the tendency when you do this is you'll get stiff. You'll tense up because you want to hold that position so you get tight. But if you'll keep this wrist working, you can't get tight. It doesn't work. You can't do both. So do this. With the wrist, just collapse the wrist with each one. And as a little practice, it would help. If instead of thumb, focus on little finger. A lot of times that's the melody, so you just want to practice the and then you keep the hand there and focus on a little finger. The rest of the fingers go right along. It's really nice how that works if you keep them in the same position. I'd recommend you try that out on this piece just for kicks and giggles and see what happens. So in this, you're just the left hand's just playing the bottom notes of the chords. That's really all it is till you get down to the very bottom. That last line you're here, and then you go up, and then here. And look at the fingering for the left hand. You have a five dice one, so you play it with fifth finger, and then put your thumb on it. So. However you want to do it, I don't care how you get it there, but while you're holding it down, put your thumb on it, and that way you're in position to play that C. Remember that low C is two ledger lines below? It's down here. While you're holding this down, here, and that's how that works. It's wonderful, ain't it? One little tricky spot for the left hand, look out. At the end of the second line, you're here to here. And then the third line, you play that C with second finger. Well, the next C, the quarter notes with fifth finger, so just play it with fifth. As long as you know you need to do it. I mean, we do this a lot. You just need to be aware that's what it is. If you want to do a finger substitution, that's up to you. You can do five, two to five, that's awkward, that really is. You almost have to go through all the other fingers to get there, and you can if you want as practice. You can start with two, and then you go to three, and then go to four, and then go to five. But you can also just go from two to five. Then on top of that, they want to add a little bit of pedal. Well, you, do, you don't need pedal with this piece at all. You can do it fine without it, but they added it, so let's stick it in. It's good practice. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the pedal down right after we play the notes. And I'm going to lift the pedal up right after I play the first notes in the next measure. I'm going to connect them. 
This, you see, the only way on piano to connect repeated notes is to use the pedal. That's the thing. So here, and then lift it up, and then go up, and then right after I play the F chord, push it down, and then in the last measure, when I play the first chord there, I'm going to lift it up right after it, so I connect them. That's all. Now then the second line, the last two measures, you're here. Here, I'm going to lift it up right after I play the quarter note, the G chord. And I'm not connecting these, but I, I put it down there. And then when you go to the third line, you change the pedal right after you play the chord. That is, you lift the pedal up and let it back down. After you play the chord, it lags behind. And that's the way we do this. At the bottom, the last line, the chords, the pedal's down. I'll lift the pedal up after I play the notes in the next measure. And then I'm going to change the pedal when I play the chord or not. Play the chord first and then change the pedal. And then hold the pedal down to the end and the hands and the pedal come up at the same time. And that's the pedal. The 18. Now as far as the dynamics go, you're starting out medium loud. It's all, I don't know what melody is in this thing. You, you decide. Uh, you can almost say the left hand is the melody. And play the right hand soft. If you want to, that works. If you want to try and say the top note in the right hand is melody, then play that note louder than the others. Man, that's kind of hard, but it might be better if you pretended like the left hand was melody here and bring out the left hand and play the right hand soft. Well, you're starting out medium loud with that, and then you're going to crescendo as you go up, and then day crescendo as you go back down. Second line, crescendo up to loud. There's not a lot of difference between medium loud and loud. Take your time with this. You got two measures to get there. Don't get loud until the last measure here. And then medium loud. And then you do that again. And then the last line, you're going to crescendo to loud again. I want to play this with you slowly. I'm not going to do the dynamics. I'm just going to do the notes and the pedal. And you can do the dynamics on your own. This says moderately fast. I don't, again, what's moderately fast? One, two, three, four. Four. Two. Four. Do you decide what moderately fast is? We're going to go slow. Well, forget the fast part. So go ahead and put your hands in C position, your foot on the pedal, and I'll give us four counts. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three. 